No cell phones, no television, just the sounds of nature. This is the Hambage Center of Rabin County, Georgia, where even the meals begin in silence. This tucked away community for artists was founded in 1934. It's the vision of Brunswick native Mary Hambage, whose love of art could only be matched by her passion for nature. Sometimes I hear music in the hiss of a fire, in the roar of a waterfall, and no sound at all. A free spirit and early feminist, Mary moved to New York in 1911. There she found her soulmate, the prominent art historian and philosopher, Jay Handage. Her relationship with Jay, I think, truly is one of the great relationships of the 20th century, one of the most romantic stories. He was her muse and she was very much his. One of the highlights of their life together was a trip they took to Greece in 1921. This trip would change Mary's life. When she was there, she met a group of women who were weavers who were working in a small village outside of Athens. And they were doing a very fine craft, very uh, delicate type of uh, weaving. And she just fell in love with it. Mary Hambidge learned weaving during that visit and became a true artist in the process. She was unusual in many ways. For one thing, she was a profoundly philosophical woman and very talented. She um, had a very high aim in her art. Three years after the trip to Greece, Mary's beloved husband Jay died suddenly. After Jay Hambidge died, Mary came back to Georgia and um, in, as a treat to him, um, after she was able to acquire this land, named the center in his honor. It was originally called the Jay Hambidge Foundation. Mary taught weaving to a group of women in Rabin County. Nora Justice met Mary as a teenager. I was 14 or 15. I would come and learn to weave through Mary and the weavers. I really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun. The weavers of Rabin became famous for the work they produced, all of it designed by Mary Hambidge. Mary wove fabrics for Presidents Roosevelt and Truman, and uh, she won the gold medal at the Paris World's Fair, and um, just all kinds of things. Her fabrics were in the Truman Yacht and also in the White House. Over the decades, Mary's fame as an artist and philosopher drew hundreds of people to Rabin County. And my understanding is that she would never turn anybody away. If anybody came, came here, if she had acquaintances or friends of friends who who were, you know, were creative people, she would always, always offer them a place to stay. I am the weaver of eternity, and the fabric is my life that I weave. Mary Hambidge died in 1974, but the Hambidge Center would live on. In, in her will, Mary very clearly indicated that she wanted the land to be left in trust for artists and other creative people to have time and space to create close to nature. And I think that, that was inherent in everything she did during her lifetime. And it's very much the mission of Hambidge today. Hambidge today houses artists year round who have been accepted to the residency program. Nine rustic cabins are available and the average length of stay is two weeks. Spread across 600 acres of pristine mountain land, artists work during the day in solitude. But at dinner time, they're expected to come together to share ideas and discuss their work in a tradition established by Mary Hambidge. I really enjoyed your performance last night. It was oh, just thanks. a blast. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It was greatly done, and I love the way you handled it when Shelly asked you to do another song there at the end. <laughs> you weren't planning on doing that any more than I was planning on reciting a poem tonight, and yet <laughs> you handled it marvelously well. I handled it. I didn't, you know, as a non-pianist, I didn't have anything particularly work, worked out, but I did want another, another shot at that um, uh, tango. Music composer Thomas Benjamin has been coming to the Hambage Center since the 1970s. 
a busy teacher, choral conductor, and music theorist at the Peabody Conservatory in Baltimore, Thomas gets composing done at Hambage. I love the isolation. I love it being rural. Um, I'm a country boy. I'm from Vermont originally. and uh, I love being surrounded by nature. Wonderful staff, just superb staff. One feels very supported and taken care of here. I love the fact that it's small. There are eight artists at most at a time. Very collegial group. I can hold my books I can do fun there. Around the middle of the day, depending on the weather, I will typically walk for an hour or two. The walks are beautiful around here. Uh, and I'll be thinking about the piece as I do that and find that very often, in a fairly conscious way, uh, I will work out issues and problems uh, with the piece when I, when I do that. So the walks are a very important part of the process for me and the beauty of the place is a very important part of coming here. Atlanta visual artist Jennifer Sheehan found she had to adjust to the profound silence at the Hambage Center. I turned on my iPod and I was listening to music and I realized, you know, like, I can't concentrate and so I turned off the iPod and it was that first moment that I really realized that I really was, it was very quiet. It was daytime, in the middle of the day I had birds, you know, making noise and there's a creek really close to my cabin so I could hear that. But other than that, I was the only human noise, I guess you could say, that was, that was anywhere around. I think I messed up when I printed this one. Jennifer is at a crossroads in her career as an artist. She and her husband, both graduates of the Atlanta College of Art, have decided to move to New York, where Jennifer may enter graduate school. I need a time where I can get my space and kind of figure out what I want to do, plan things for New York. It, it's really easy to get caught up in all the other stuff going on and to forget your own work. And I think going to Hambage and having that two weeks to get a real, a real good foundation in, in what I plan to do in the future was really important. Once a year in mid-July, the Hambage Center opens its doors to the public. Young and old are invited to explore their own creativity as well as purchase the works of Hambage artists. Whether for a day, a week, or a month, visitors and artists come and go. But one presence never seems to leave the Hambage Center. In going into Mary Hambage's house here, her wonderful cabin, you get a sense of a presence. I think that's, that's true. It may just be that it's a slightly musty, wonderful old house, but I, well, you feel that there's a benign spirit hovering. I think she would be very happy with the letters that we get from people who've been here who um, tell us how much this experience has meant to them and how it's really changed their work, that it's changed the path of their work, that it's changed the, the direction that their lives go in after they leave here. I think she would be very pleased with that. In seeking deep within, truth is found and beauty explained.